What's up, y'all? I'm back for another video. Today, I am reviewing the movie I originally was going to review. Uh, Silent Night. Um, and man, I gotta say, it's an interesting movie. And a couple of things I'm going to say before, like, going into this movie. Don't expect a lot of action. And I'll admit, the trailers definitely make it seem like it's going to be more of like a John Wick kind of action movie. Where there is a lot of action. There is action, but it's not as much as you think. And also, don't go in expecting dialogue. And I think that threw off some people. So that's why, like, when they were watching it, because I have seen some reviews where, like, they were thrown off by, like, the, the lack of talking. But for me, well, it's because I was told. I was told um, a couple of times that, yeah, this movie does, isn't going to have dialogue. You have to pay attention to, like, the facial expressions and all that. And I liked it. You know, well, because I look at it this way. I saw earlier this year Sisu came out and there wasn't a lot of dialogue with that movie. When you're following that character, he, he kind of just makes facial expressions. The only time you hear dialogue is when you're with the villains and then the the one uh, group of women he saves are like the only ones that have dialogue. But aside from that, that movie, when you're largely just following Sisu, it's pretty much facial expressions. So it's like this, but like kind of a bit more extreme because they do that with like every character, not just Brian. Um, you know, the premise is his son is killed in a, by a stray bullet when two gangs are trying to kill each other. Brian tries to confront the shooter, Playa. Playa ends up shooting him in the throat, and that's what causes him to lose his voice. And basically, the, the premise is he, a year later, wants to kill the people that did it. And when Brian goes through his little arc, you know, like drinking, you know, going from like, his, you know, he's depressed. Obviously, you're gonna have that depression, you know, when you're, you just lost, you just lost his son. And they do show you what happened, and man, you don't necessarily see the kid get shot, but you see like him start bleeding. And the movie starts um, with Brian running to chase the people that did it. And the uh, the sound design is interesting too for this movie because yeah, there's moments where you can't hear or. You're just kind of hearing just his breathing. So, and I have a couple of negatives with this movie, but largely I really like the buildup is what really I like. I love the buildup, like him going through the months, you know, tr you know, training, working on training with guns, working out, um, working on his driving, you know, working his way up to, to kill those guys. Like they do really do the buildup well. The villain is on the weak side, and that's partially, it could be just because, you know, there's no dialogue, so you can't really, it is going to be a little bit hard to build a character around that, but besides he's just the bad, you know, Cholo guy. That's kind of all he really was, but that's fine. And I do think the way he died was a little, weak. I think in general the third act was a little rushed. That's one of my main criticisms. Another one I have, the mom or his wife, Saya. She, sh I honestly think she should have died. I think it should have been her and, her and 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 the son, because I don't really felt like I felt like she had no point in the movie. Whenever you see her, I, I just felt like she didn't need to be there. Besides, I guess for the scene in the end, but aside from that, I, I felt like it would have made more sense. And I get it; it would have been too like I, maybe they didn't want to flat out copy Punisher, but it it would have made more sense for the story if both of them died. The bullet got both of them. Because I just, I don't know, her character I just felt like was kind of useless aside from that. Um, and then um, and then there's like one scene in the third act when he, one of them uh, play his girlfriend or play his girlfriend um, shoots because there's a, 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 a cop character that you kind of see throughout the film who, um, Brian gives the information to and they both and he kind of goes in in the end and helps uh, Brian fight uh, play his people and the girlfriend shoots at both of them and Brian gets a chance to like you know obviously he able he's able to get the gun over the side of her head but then she plays I guess victim and he hesitates and she ends up shooting it it was kind of dumb he was a smart character up until that point. Why would he... It was kind of dumb how they did it. I didn't like that. It was kind of dumb. Like, we had to make him dumb for the moment. Like, don't do that. I hate when... 
I kind of don't like when movies do that, where we have to dumb down a character for a moment to happen. Like, why would he do that? She knows that she's just as evil as he is. I mean, you see her throughout the movie, um, like, work with him. So, and she was just shooting at you, like, a second ago. Why are you hesitating to shoot? It, it was, I, I didn't like it. But aside from that scene, I overall like the movie. I love the build-up, too. Like, his build-up to confronting them. And that's why I was saying Saya should have been written out, because I just felt like there was no need for her to actually be there. It would have made more sense, and I actually think it would have hit harder if he lost both of them. And he wants to get vengeance for both. But Because it almost seems like she's only there just for the scene in the end, where it Brian... I'm just going to say it, Brian died, because it looks like that's what was happening. Like, after, you know, finally killing Playa, he's, like, bleeding out, and he's looking into, like, the ornaments that are on, on the thing. And he's seeing, like, Brian's life. That's how I look at it, is, like, he's kind of dying. Um, but aside from that, I overall really like the movie. Um, I, I, the idea of, like, having to just act with facial expression, perfect. Like, that scene with Sayo after, I'll admit, that was a well-done scene. So maybe I can, I'm not, like, mad they kept her alive. I just think it would have worked better narratively if she also died. But I did like her in this scene when, this was after Brian was taken into like the infirmary and you know, about to do surgery. And you just see her all covered in blood, just sad. Like you can convey emotion without without having to say dialogue. You don't have to. You don't have her there just screaming. Like they're actually having her just internally handle everything. And I do like that about the film. Like I think Joel Kinnaman especially really conveys his emotion without having to say a word. Um. And they really pull it off. And I will say, again, going in, there is no dialogue. Be prepared. I understand that threw off a lot of people. I can understand that. If you don't know going, you don't... Because most movies you watch, there's a lot of them, there's going to be dialogue. But when you go in and there's no dialogue, I get it. That, that will throw off people. But I actually think they did a good job with it. So 7.5 out of 10. I have, like I said, little issues. I think the third act was a little bit rushed that one scene and then I personally just think narratively Saya probably would dying would have made more sense for the story but aside from those three things really like the movie definitely I would watch it again not in theaters um, but I'd watch it again and Joel Kinnaman's acting was great so I really liked it so um, later tonight I'm gonna be roasting a stream uh, not screen right now, but I know I normally do that I'll probably still have the stream even though just because even though it's not necessarily a screen rant, I'm still going to use my thumbnail that Skirmitar made me. So I'm just going to keep using, even when it, the article isn't screen rant, this one is going to be about Collider. But I figure, why not? So, anyway. Um, but yeah, seven and a half out of ten. I, I enjoy this movie. starts basically we see brian like just like chasing <coughs> the cars that <coughs> you know shot his son and we see <coughs> you know we see him covered in blood <coughs> it's like right after his son was killed and after playa kills uh, the other car brian smashes his window then they chase him into like a construction thing where the car does run into like um and man yeah that scene was kind of crazy when they run into that machine and it fucking impales the one dude through the skull like that was pretty brutal and then yeah playa ends up shooting brian in the back then in the throat and then you know he goes to the infirmary they manage to do surgery and that scene when Brian freaks out, you know, obviously because he almost has that realization. His son, well, because obviously, you know, he was going through surgery and you know having a physical therapy. You do see the battle a little bit, and yeah, like even at this point, like when there was no dialogue, it really didn't bother me. I was like, I actually really love the facial expression acting in this. I, 
I think it's an underappreciated art form in a way of acting, of having just to act with your face and not having to say a word and, and all that. But yeah, he, he gets released from the hospital. He goes to the house. And I love like the moments where Brian, they really convey Brian's like, I, I, almost like in a way a little bit similar to Godzilla, like kind of like survivor's guilt, you know? He, you know, he feels bad. I mean, like his son got killed. It's almost like, yeah, you'd rather it be you than it be him, you know? And like, there's a scene, like, when he first arrives, you see, it, like, a visual of his him playing with his son, even though it's just him coming back. It's, like, him hitting him. And, yeah, he freaks out, you know, he lets out a scream because he sees his present, the gift he was going to give his present, you know, the, the present he was going to give his son. And then, he, you know, obviously we jump ahead to April 2022, and, you know, he's very depressed and, you know, he's drinking and it's, you know, hurting side. That's why I guess is why they kept her alive. I'm just going to say it one more time. I just, I think it would have worked better narratively if it both killed both of them. Because I just don't really feel like, aside from like that one scene, I don't really feel like she does much in the movie. Besides, obviously, you know, it's hurting her too because of what's going on. And I, oh, I got to, I should have mentioned this too. I love how sometimes some of the dialogue is just done through, what well, dialogue, but done through text. Like, there's a scene where Cy, I guess that's why they kept her alive. So I guess in that sense, it's fine. Because she's messaging Brian, like, oh, it's hurting me. So you got, like, the di you sort of have dialogue, but through text. Like, actual text. Like, you see when people text each other, like, the they, they come up on the, the screen. Even later on, when, um, Play it tells everybody to kill this fucker. You see it come up through text. So I do like that. I think that was an, a genius way to still have a little bit of dialogue without people talking. So he then decides, you know what? I'm going to get vengeance for my son. Um, marks the calendar December 24th, the year at 2022, a year after his son was killed. He's going to kill the people that did it. So he goes to see um, the... The detective character but he's only there just so he can get like the the wanted posters in the background on them and he puts them up as like a goal then he starts like working out and um you know working on his gun skills and i do love that aspect of the film the montage is like one of my favorite sequences in the movie like he's working his way up you know like when he first starts he barely can do a pull up um, he's not great with the gun. He, then he eventually gets better with the gun. And then, yeah, he gets a car. He makes sure the car with, like, bulletproof vests because he knows he's going to be in a shootout. Like, they really did a good job of making him, like, the everyman, in a way. You know, just without the dialogue. So, the closer he, we get to the date, um, I think in October 2022, he goes... Um, and stakes out a, I guess we'll just call it a play his hideout. And then there was that moment when he sees Playa again and he has like the flashback of what Playa did to him. I love that shit. It's realistic, you know? It makes sense. When you see the something that, the thing that causes your trauma, it's going to all come back. You know, they always do that with Wolverine and, you know, when you see Stryker in the X Men movies, you know, it makes sense. You know, it's going to all come back. So. I think this, these both Godzilla and this film really handle trauma well. Like, they're, in terms of, like, that, like, this film really conveys Brian's trauma perfectly, man. You know, like, because there's even a scene when he goes to his son's room, he lays down there, and he's just imagining himself, you know, in his son, you know, you know, being with his son. Again, like, as if his son was still alive. Because he just lays in his son's bed. It's like, a, you know, a moment when he thinks, like, his son's with him. That kind of thing. They really showcase that perfectly. So, yeah, he sends his wife away. He gets the guns he needs. And then it's the day before. Like, there's even a moment where he thinks, because he opens, uh, he's at, like, some store. And uh, he sees his son. He thinks he sees his son, but it's, like, another kid. Cause he sees the mom pick up the kid and it like just hits him like, Oh, that's not my son. Cause it looks like the son for a second. I understand, man, that PTSD, they really like show it well. And then Playa, then a uh, player shows up and Brian is like ready to kill him, but he can't 
because play is giving like back to the community, giving like money to the kids, you know, and kind of playing with them a little bit, kind of showing like, oh, I'm not some evil gangster. Granted, I, I there was a part of me that's like, I kind of wanted him to, him to just kill him there, but it made sense why he didn't do it. Because it would have traumatized those kids in front of them, like almost like what happened with his son. So I kind of get it. But then, yeah, so then Playa leaves. Um, after like one of his um, people kind of bump into Brian, kind of knocking him down. And then the girl dumps like some kind of ice cream on him. And then, yeah, so he works his way up. He finds the money guy that uh, works for Playa. And he kidnaps him. Um, and then they actually have a pretty good fight. I actually really like it. And, I, and it's this kind of fight where the main hero, it's not like some easy fight for Brian. Like, he doesn't just, like, immediately take him out. Like, no. It was like, they struggled for a bit. And the guy got some good shots on Brian. Because it makes sense. Brian is just a dude. Like, yeah, you've had a little bit of training. But, like, no, this is, like, a reality. Like, you're not going to just beast through a guy like I'm wrong. I love 80s action films where that happens. I'm cool with that when movies do that too. <laughs> Sometimes I'm cool when the your eyes are struggle. <laughs> and like the truth is, yeah, the fight's not gonna look pretty, like in some movies where <laughs> Like, I mentioned there's a lot. What a fight, like, is very stylized. <coughs> versus something like this, where it's hard-hitting, but it's realistic. So it's not gonna look pretty. But yeah, Brian manages to knock the dude out. He then gives the dude, and then, like, a... Uh, a, a hard drive, a thumbstick drive to the cops. The, the main detective about where the location is. And then... Brian sets out, and I love his look. He looks like the Punisher, minus the skull. He, he has a kind of like a long jacket, kind of a similar jacket the Punisher would wear. Gets in his Mustang, you know, like his, you know, um, customized armored Mustang. And then he sees um, a couple of gang members uh, attack a girl and a guy and rob them. And then he kills them both. Initially, it looks like, oh, he's going to ignore it. But he, he ends up killing both of them. And the one guy tries to get on the roof. He tries to, like, you know, dri like drive so, like, the guy can fly off. But he doesn't. The guy tries to shoot him. Um, Brian grabs the gun and shoots through the roof and kills him. And then when he sees the blood, he, he pukes. I love that. I love that little detail because it's like, yeah, he's been wanting revenge. But he just killed a guy. Like... It makes sense. Like, it's like that reality a little bit. Like, he, he's... Because Brian <laughs> looks like he's just like an electrician. He's like a... He has a normal job. I don't think the, he, it's his head that he's like former military. So if one thing, if he's former military, yeah, you kill people. <clears throat> Not all the time, but, but if you're in the military, there's a chance you've killed people depending on what branch of the military you're in. But it wasn't anything, the movie doesn't say anything like that. He was just a normal dude. So going from that, yeah, you want revenge, you want to kill them, but then you actually kill a person, it is going to sit on you like, dude, I just killed that guy. But then obviously it kind of went away eventually had a, because the gang are having a shootout because he sends the fingers of the people, uh, I guess they're Playa's gang, and met from Playa's gang, sends the fingers of them Making it, obviously making it look like it was like a rival gang that did it. Then we have a big shootout, which a couple of cops end up getting killed because, you know, it's a massive shootout. So Brian then goes in and just drives around, just killing them. Pretty brutal. Like, the kills are brutal when you see them. It's just not like... This is where the action does kick in a bit more by this point. Brian then runs over the dude filming everything, and he takes the guy's camera... And records himself shooting the dude. And then that's when Play is like, kill this fucker. And then sends it to like out to his gang. And then we see Brian have like a kind of a quiet moment with his son. He's just like this toy that like sings like a song, like hums a song. So it's like a it's like something that reminds him of his son. Then yeah, we have a big car chase. 
John Woo really deli- like John Woo knows how to deliver car chases, and he does. Like I really love the car chase in this movie. I love how raw it was, and the use of the, the cinematography for that. He manages to evade um, the people after him by causing an accident, causing the the big um, truck that's chasing him to to overturn, to flip over, flip over. So he manages to get away gets in a play as hideout and then this is where we kind of get the start of and also at the same time sorry about that same time the detective arrives there so we have a big shootout brian's taking him out and working his way up kind of obviously not as good but a little bit like the raid where you know you're working your way up to confront him while this you know play is hooking up with this girl you know having a you know kind of a chill time while all his people are just getting killed and man the kills are hard, hit hard, and granted, yeah, Brian isn't just easily going through them. He takes a couple shots, you know. So because even a couple of times, like yeah, they manage like when his gun runs out of ammo, like they try to make the fights realistic. I do like that choice. Like you know, like a lot of action movies, sometimes it's unlimited ammo. No, he runs out of ammo. So when he runs out of ammo, the bad guys have like a second to grab him and shit, and he has to try to reload while like in the struggle. Like they make him like. He does get his ass kicked a lot in this fight. Like, because then when he fights the big dude, yeah, he gets his ass beat that whole fight pretty much until he, he's able to get a hold of the gun and then shoot the gut through the dude's head. And that was actually pretty brutal. Granted, we didn't see that in the trailer, but it was it was still cool seeing that in the movie. So, because uh, the detective helps him, then they decide to work together, and that's when um, Brian, um, Playa's girl starts shooting at them. Um, with like a submachine gun, she gets some shots on uh, the detective. Um, but Brian manages to get like when she, you know, when she's about to come out of the room, Brian kind of gets to the side of her, and he should have killed her there. But no, he like hesitates, and then she shoots him. And then, granted, he eventually shoots her, but it's like, why did they do that? That was one pro. I I didn't like that. That bothered me. I was like. Should have shot her just directly. You could have had her shoot him beforehand. Like be, she gets some good shots on him, but then he manages to get to the side of her, and then he should have killed her. I don't know if they were like they felt like, well, you know, because she tried to look like a victim. You know, she dropped the gun and gave him like this smile. I don't know. It's just that bothered me. Anyway, so he confronts Playa, and wasn't a bad fight. I just think it should have been a little longer because I felt like he once he got the. The, the control of Leia, he pretty much kills him. He strangles him, and then he looks at, like, the ornaments on top of the, like, ceiling, and he's, like, seeing his son, and he's basically bleeding out. And that's, I'm assuming he dies, because then the wife reads the note and is at the, the, the graveyard, or the cemetery. And yeah, so I gotta say, good film. I just think the ending was a little rushed. But aside from that, man, dope film. The idea of the lack of dialogue works for me. It really, really amps up the acting. It gives some good good performances. You're still able to see what's going on. You know what's happening. He would, if you can have a movie with no dialogue and I can still tell what's going on, it's good. And I think they do a good job at that. You still know what's going on. I love the internal struggle of Brian. You know, what he goes through. And, like, like I love the some of the realistic action in it. You know, he's not just beasting these guys. He's struggling a bit. Like, yeah, he's getting a little bit better with guns, but you're in the field now. You're shooting at these guys who are trying to kill you. Um, the, he's not winning these hand-to-hand fights. Like, when he fights that one big dude, that big dude pretty much beats his ass the whole time. He gets some good shots in, but largely he got his ass beat. And that's what made, I like that realistic take. Or even the scene when he kills the guy the first time and he pukes. Because it's like you, th- when you, th- it's the difference between thinking about wanting to kill somebody and then actually doing it. I love that, like, that's reality. That's one thing I do like is the realistic action. You don't, and I'm going to say it again, is don't expect it to be like John Wick where there is a lot of action. It, it just isn't. At least the first half of it. But it's also paced very well. It's only an hour and 44 minute movie. But it's paced well. I think I love going through his struggle. And his, you know, 
is training and all that leading up to the basically i love the lead up to the confrontation confrontation could have been a little bit better but aside from that i still like the the, the build up lead up to it so seven and a half out of ten movie i give it i'm giving it in the half because the facial expression acting and how they were still and they're still in the fact they're still able to convey what's going on even with just facial expression yeah this movie you're gonna have to pay attention a little bit more you can't just look down because even with most movies, you can look down if they have dialogue. You, you still know what's happening. There's no dialogue in this, so you have to really pay attention. But aside from that, it's good. And I think what they give you is good. It's just, you know, I have a few couple issues, but it doesn't necessarily hurt the movie. So, other than that, guys, um, I'm going to be roasting Collider later tonight. Um, maybe not even tonight. I'll see if I... If I Cause I'm gonna go see Godzilla again at some point. I'll see maybe if I can do that after I get back. Maybe after I get back from that, I might do the video. I'll see like if I'm high and I am on time and shit. But if not, it'll be an evening. But aside from that, guys, I am gonna cheers. Talk to y'all later. Y'all later.